going to, uh oh, my ducky is at their spot again. Let's make sure I don't, you know, see them. But guess what? Mac is going to see how they're doing and they're not going to, might not like it. Hey guys, how's it going? How's everybody doing? Everybody's okay? Uh oh, the, the pond is getting dry again. Oh, sorry about that. Pond's getting dry again. Oh, we need more rain. We need rain again. We need rain. Lord, send down your rain. Hallelujah. The ducks need your rain. Yes, they need it. Oh, their pond is drying out. That evil son of ours just keep beaming in December. You know, uh, 19, supposed to be cold, but warm and sunny in Florida. It is what it is. Hey, how's it going? I mean, I'm sorry about your pond getting dried out there. Hope we get some rain very soon. Hope we get some rain very soon. Hope we get some rain very soon. That's all I'm saying. But topic of this message, accepting sores. All right. Now, what sword am I talking about? Well, the scripture says in Hebrews 4 and 12 that the word of God is sharp. Uh oh, it's sharp. That that's not a good uh, thing for something to be inside of someone uh, to happen. I mean, sharp. Okay, it's sharp, and it says got two edges on it. Oh no, it got two edges on it, so it can cut to the other side and cut to the other side, and it cuts. Yeah, it cuts you. Huh? That's uncomfortable right there. So it's sharp and it can cut you and bad things can happen. Have a good day, sir. And the thing is, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. Hold on, it's saying that it's sharper than, ooh, it's compared to a two-edged sword that is sharper than it. You know, I know, hope you know your swords and swords are pretty sharp and they can really cut pretty good. Depends on how sharp they sharpen and depends how the metal it, it has. But that's another message. But uh, the word of God is a sharp, uh, more likely what I want to boil down to this, you know, it's an uncomfortable uh, object to have inside of you. Let me say that again. It's an uncomfortable, it's present, the word of God is presented as an uncomfortable uh, object that comes inside you. It's interesting that Jesus, when he comes back on the second uh, coming to on Mount Olives is known as the word of God. And when the word of God opens his mouth, the Antichrist and his army will be bzzup, diminished. That's powerful. And that and 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 it wasn't no comfort there, you know. He didn't, he's not gonna comfort the Antichrist kingdom and the armies, he's not gonna lay them down in pillows and make them sleep and rest and relax. He's going to annihilate him so where are you going with this Mac well thing is this word of God that is sharper than a two-edged sword and it's in the word of God is as what we know in uh, Ephesians 6 that talks about the whole armor of God we know the word of God as a sword yeah it says the word of God as a sword now watch this and it also says it's a spirit. That's important right there. It's a spirit too. So what are you talking about, Mac? Well, it's a spirit that comes inside. See, it come, when the word of God comes in, it's a spirit. It's an unseen force. It's an unseen force inside you that is questioning. See, one thing I, well, well I learned that to each his own mature spiritual maturity level it will question because yes because as what jesus was talking about in matthews 13 the word of god fell 
on the, the the word of God fell or the seed fell on this uh, set of uh, the stony ground and the thistle ground and and it couldn't it couldn't do it couldn't cut nothing. Hope you don't know where I'm going with it. It couldn't see. Watch this about a seed. A seed. If a seed is going to fulfill its purpose, it has to get inside of has to get inside of the ground. It has to go inside. If it's going to fulfill a purpose, a lot of traffic here. If it's going to fulfill its purpose, it has to get inside. If a seed, now the seed is the word and the, and the sword is the word. So the sword, in order for the sword to fulfill its purpose, it has to get inside. Inside of what? Wait a minute. Inside of us, that it can uh, cut us up, cut cut up the flesh. Uh oh, cut up the flesh, cut up the flesh spiritually, cut up the flesh spiritually. What you mean, Matt? Well, the thing is, when you come to an understanding that uh, you are Genesis one twenty six, that you're made in the image in the likeness of God, and you find out that. This enemy that Paul talks about uh, in Romans, I believe, 7. Uh, this enemy called the flesh. You know what I'm saying? The flesh is your enemy. The Bible talk, talks about the flesh is your enemy. And of course, Galatians uh, 4 talks about the flesh is your enemy. When you recognize your enemy of you uh, of you fulfilling your purpose, like I said, Genesis 1, 26, made an image in likeness of God, you your purpose is to be if you're going to fulfill a true purpose your purpose is going to be Gen genesis 126 any other other pursuits blah you know blah nothing that's what paul says talk, he talks about it's not you know it's nothing it's dung uh in philippians 2 i think or 3 3 3 yeah it's dumb you know what i'm saying that any pursuits of this world is nothing. You're, you're, you're going after nothing, real. But the true pursuit of anybody going to truly fulfill a purpose, they're going to need the Spirit of God to develop inside us. Now watch this. The Spirit of God is going to come as a sword, and a sword is created to be a utensil that is supposed to cut to remove. Cut to remove not not to comfort and to you know comfort and hope that it continues on you know existing but it's to remove you know and the thing is the pro problem is you know churches these days now use this word of god too many times uh and uh, and uh, to me I, it reflects the whole ideal of why is it not fulfilling its purpose because like i talked about this morning if we were like jesus christ and that told satan that man will not shall not live by bread alone but by every word every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god the word of god is as what paul describes it sharper than a two-edged sword the sword comes to cut and divide what's rightly divide what's right and what's wrong according to God not not according to men nonsense you know I mean you will think that the outcome of man's wrongdoing can speak for itself that this sort I mean this ideal of what men say does not work but when you are yielded you operating in 1 Corinthians 2 15 the lust of the flesh lust of the eyes pride of life Men can say any lie to you, or more likely, I call them pillows. Men can say, speak any kind of pillow to you, and you uh, comfort yourself in the flesh to believe their comforting lies that requires you to not do something, but just allow the w wicked world system to influence you you know, with their uh, lies and their wrongdoing and a lot of bad outcomes happen all, all because of that. But the word of God 
comes to be uncomfortable to your flesh and it's coming to remove your flesh because I believe that yeah Jesus Christ is the word as according to what John says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was God so wait a minute so Jesus Christ the word of God got crucified whoa -oh. wait a minute the word of God has got crucified Wait a minute. That means he, the word of God, they crucified the flesh, you know? Flesh got crucified. The word of God, in order for the word of God, the Lamb of God, to fulfill its purpose, it had to remove uh, the flesh in order for it to fulfill its purpose. It, the word of God if it's going to be and execute what it was created to be from the beginning to bring salvation to humanity it has to uh, remove the flesh in order to do it oh there was already an example given to us concerning what jesus christ you know died on the cross and removed you know his uh flesh in order for the word of God to fulfill its purpose. You know what I'm saying? That the two-edged sword came and really attacked hell. See, the two-edged sword didn't attack Romans for crucifying. It, it didn't attack Romans it, 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 that was attacking them in the flesh. But the, the, the spirit, you know, Jesus Christ came and attacked hell and took the keys of death, you know, hell keys of death and hell in the grave it, it did a spiritual attack but in order for a spiritual attack to happen flesh had to get removed uh oh wait a minute now what you talking about okay the word of god is supposed to remove our flesh so if we truly want to attack the kingdom of darkness we have to come not by power not by might but by the spirit of the lord to truly attack and come back the uh uh, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and rules of darkness in this world and spiritual wickedness in high places in order for us to truly attack this spiritual darkness that is unseen. You know what I'm saying? We have to remove the flesh. Therefore, we need to accept the word of God, accept these swords if we want to fight for our Lord. That rhymed, didn't it? We have to accept the sword of the word of God to pierce our flesh. Pretty much our flesh is simple. What I want, what I want, what I want, what I want, what I want. I, or, and, and it's also what I want somebody to do, what I want somebody to do, what I want somebody to do. Yeah, what I want and what I want somebody to do. That's the flesh screaming out and it's immature. And because in flesh does not really know what it wants. It, it, it just wants and it's not created to be fulfilled. Like I told a lady one time, the flesh is not created to be satisfied or fulfilled. It's kind of like just put water on your skin and see how long your water, your flesh can contain the water on there. It will evaporate. You know what I'm saying? The flesh is not created to contain. It's not created to contain to try to fulfill anything but of course the lies of this world system will tell you that the lust of the flesh can be fulfilled and you can fulfill it continually doing sinning and continually becoming emptier and emptier because the like i told y'all about the earth the earth the ingredients of the earth the ingredients of every human being ingredients of everything is of the earth and the earth is what god says without form void darkness that's what the earth has for you uh, without form void darkness you keep going after the earth that's going to be the outcome you get out of the earth that's what it's going to is it is what it is and ain't what it ain't but you need to get the word of god the word of god to cut your flesh because your flesh is going to uh, get you to destruction but the word of god is going to get you into deliverance that deliverance that you grow your spirit that you will go out and destroy the kingdom of darkness because that's what we're supposed to be aiming to do destroy, destroy the kingdom of darkness not get comfort in the lies of the kingdom of darkness that they be saying all the time to you on social media and everywhere else 
around your environment too. All right, that's the message. Hope you got it. To God be the glory of him forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen.